I'm gonna do a breakdown today of how I use my Novation Launch Control XL. I've been using this controller for years now. I uh, used to use a little Nano Control, still do in the studio, um, but for live key stuff, I love the, the flexibility and honestly, the amount of knobs on this thing is awesome because I use knobs for all of my effects. And so I'm gonna show you a little bit inside my Ableton session as well. But basically the philosophy is this. Uh, along the right, all of these buttons basically control things inside of the session, whether that's click on and off, cues on and off, um, stop clips right here, got our up and down scene arrows here, obviously, uh, play scene right here. Uh, this one's one of my favorites. It's a sub drop. Um, and then, so that's, that's the right side is kind of controlling the session. Um, all of the knobs here are effects except for this top right one, which controls the click level. Um, if we're ever kind of getting off, I'll bump it a little bit. Or sometimes in like ministry moments uh, where it's just me playing, I'll kind of turn it down to give everyone's ears a break. And then if the band comes back in, I'll bring it back up to normal level. Um, so like I said, all the knobs effects except for this guy. And then in the middle here, obviously the faders, um, the faders serve two purposes. They're either volumes right here, or they are uh, low pass filters, which are these three right here. So the way I kind of have my session set up is I've got everything running through buses. So I have all my pianos, some pads, uh, synths, other <laughs> miscellaneous stuff, some textures, and then I've got all my tracks over here. So for instance, the pianos uh, take up this first kind of bank everything's kind of laid out like a channel strip. So all our knobs are effects, right? But the, these six knobs right here correspond to my piano group, right? So we've got piano volume right here. You can see it moving up and down in Ableton. Um, we've got piano filter, which I've got assigned to a little macro right here. And then we've got piano reverb, dotted eighth delay, quarter note delay, uh, distortion, decapitator distortion, a uh, chorus, which is the free towel chorus. It sounds awesome. And then I've got a little send here for like a reverse delay. Um, that's pretty cool. I think that's either Valhalla delay in reverse pitch mode, or it might be crystallizer. Um, yeah. So everything right here corresponds to my pianos. And then on the bottom, all of these buttons, sans these two right here are all patches. Um, so these I'm using I usually have like kind of three different pianos ready to go. Um, my first piano is the Ian real piano. Sounds awesome. Then I think this one is the cinematic piano from Keyscape. Um, and then we've got some kind of like felty soft piano. And then you may be wondering, well, what's this guy? Um, this is a little trick that I've, uh, I've talked about before and I'll do a, another video on, um, I'm trying to just blaze through the controls of this, but this basically adds a MIDI octave to anything I'm playing. So we can go from to, so when I'm playing really fast, right hand melodies comes in really, uh, really handy. So anyway, that's kind of our piano bank and then same philosophy on the pads bank. So both of these buses here, bright and mellow, those are two different categories of pads, but they both are controlled by all of these same controls. So uh, volume filter, you can see the filter going up and down. We've got some verb distortion. Uh, this is a sh like a shimmery kind of vibe, but it's on a send. Um, this is the sidechain, which is actually not a sidechain compressor at all. It's the auto pan uh, plugin, but the phase is set to zero. I'll show you what that sounds like here. And then same thing up here. This is a sequencer or kind of like a faux sequencer. A pulsey guy. And then uh, top left, we've got some chorus. 
And so same with the pianos, I've got uh, four pads. Actually, this might be a synth in this uh, session. I'm kind of, I'm always rotating kind of in and out, but I've got my three main pad sounds actually. So this is a, another E in patch, the buzzy pad. And then a little Nick's Daily patch, the OB pad from Omnisphere. Love this one, it's really mean. Sounds great with a little distortion. And then I've got a patch I kind of made from, Ian has a, 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 pa a patch called the Verbi Lead, but I made it polyphonic, I made some other edits. Sounds pretty cool. So those are all our pads. Moving on to the synth section, we've got synth one and two and synth three and four. What does that mean? Synth one and two are kind of my piano-y sounding sounds. So I send them out the same output as my pianos. So that way the front of house guy, all of the all the piano sounding sounds are coming down one channel. And then all of the pad or like synthetic sounds are coming down another channel. So, but again, same with the pads, even though there's two buses, we're controlling them with the same fader and the, uh, the same filter here. Uh, same layout as far as effects. You might be uh, seeing a pattern. I kind of use similar effects and I try to use similar colors for my knobs. That's something I like about this controller is you can customize the layout, you can customize the CC values, and you can customize the colors, um, which is really, really cool. Same thing, we got verb, we got delay on the synth. Uh, distortion. Sidechain as well, and sequencer as well. Um, in case I want to sidechain on, uh, on uh, that can be really cool. And then some chorus as well. So I'll run through the synths I use. I uh, have one from Reason called Arcade Synth. Cool way to lift a melody. This is a Mills piano from Reason. It's very nice. Really fun to stack with a regular piano. Especially on a line, if you want to add that octave. Pretty fun. And then we've got the Verbi lead. Which is what I made that uh, other pad out of, just made it polyphonic. And then this is a fun one, it's an Omnisphere patch that is like a brass thing. And the module will kind of open up the, uh, the filter envelope. It can get pretty mean. I think I use that on Bless God a little bit. Um, all right, moving on to our other bus. Um, I've got a little CP80. This is where things start to shake up a little bit as far as how stuff is laid out. For I just have one kind of strip for the other bus, so this is our volume. This knob right here is our filter, and then we've got verb, and we've got shimmer. Um, and then this channel strip right here on the far right is has everything to do with tracks. So that's why I kind of keep the click volume up here. But as you can see, these are my, my tracks um, groups, and so I can turn them up and down and then I can actually filter them and add some reverb if I want to. Um, I don't do that often, but if we're ever kind of flowing and I want to try to bring back the tracks in, an, in a more natural way and they're, you know, maybe the, the way that the stems are, have been bust out, it's not easy to bring them back in, I'll, I'll sometimes utilize that, which, which can be fun. So, um, and then uh, last but not least, this little button uh, right here, um, will trigger the texture drone that's in whatever slot is highlighted. So um, sometimes I fire an entire scene to start the drone. And that's controlled by um, the other uh, filter. These filters are linked. Um, so sometimes I fire an entire scene, but, um, but sometimes I just want to, let's say I stop that. Sometimes instead of firing an entire scene, I just want to get the drone cooking, drone going. So I can trigger that with this right here. And then I can actually even stop it um, by hitting it again, which can be really helpful. So 
anyway, that is how I lay out my Novation Launch Control. Um, would love to see how you guys lay yours out or what other controllers you guys are using for uh, playing keys live. But that's the way I do it, and it's served me well over the years. Um, anyway, thanks for watching.